This last section is going to be a little bit court, uh, shorter. We're going to look at the three types of muscles and at nervous tissue. The three types of muscle tissue are skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Muscle tissue is interesting because it has the ability to contract. It shortens and thickens. As it contracts, uh, it's going to move the body parts. Um, we can call uh, muscle cells muscle fibers because they are elongated, so they look like a fiber. Uh, you can see that here. Let's see that this long section, this is a cell. This is a, a muscle cell or a muscle fiber, okay? So we kind of use those terms interchangeably. Smooth muscle is found in areas like the wall of the stomach and the intestines. Uh, the muscle tissue that can be consciously controlled that we think about moving is skeletal muscle. Uh, smooth muscle and cardiac muscle, we don't consciously control. We don't think about moving those. Uh, a skeletal muscle fiber contains a lot of nuclei, okay? You can see here we've got lots of little, little nuclei here, okay? So we're going to look a little more in-depth at these three types. Skeletal muscles have striations, and this is a series of linear marks, and you can see that these cells are striated. Muscles that attach to bones and are controlled by conscious effort are called voluntary muscles. These are long, up to 40 millimeters. They're very narrow. Uh, 0.1 millimeter is about as narrow. Um, the stri striations form alternating light and dark patterns. They can be what we call multinucleate, meaning they can contain many nuclei in a cell. Um, they must be stimulated by a nerve cell in order to contract. Smooth muscle cells are found in the wall of the stomach and intestine. We don't have conscious control of these. Uh, the body controls these through the nervous system. Uh, we have things uh, that cause what we call peristalsis, peristalsis that move uh, food through the gastrointestinal system, and so they contract on their own. It's called smooth muscle because it does not have the same striation. So you can look at the lines they're not near as distinct as the lines that we saw in the skeletal muscle. So you want to look for and compare the different striations there, okay? Uh, these also have the cells are shorter than skeletal cells. They're not quite as long and stretched out. Um, these guys are going to have a single uh, central located nucleus. This is really important for identification. We talked about the others being multinucleate, meaning they had several nucleus um, that were in cells. They weren't uh, one nucleus per cell, and that's just because of the way they differentiate um, early on. We cannot consciously stimulate uh, these muscle cells to contract, so again, we call that involuntary. Smooth muscles move that food through the digestive system. Uh, they also constrict blood vessels and help to enter the urinary, in, empty the urinary bladder. So think about those areas and how this structure relates to the function uh, of these. Muscles, skeletal muscle cells need to be able to contract and stretch out and lengthen, right, and pull back in, okay? And so they have those long muscle fibers that are elongated that can actually contract and pull back in. Smooth muscles have a very different function, so they're made a little bit differently. So remember, look for those different striations to tell the difference between these two, and look to see if they're single nucleate or multinucleate. Do they have a single nucleus per cell, or is there a lot? Because we say this isn't striated, but if you look at this, it still kind of has this appearance. But you don't have those alternating light and dark bands with like we do in skeletal muscle tissue. So that's important to look for as well, the alternating dark and light bands, okay? Uh, people do sometimes struggle with being able to identify the different types uh, of muscle tissue, but if you'll focus on what the distinct, distinguishing or defining factors are, then you will learn it instead of just trying to rote memorize it. Cardiac muscle is very unique and it's really kind of interesting. 
Cardiac, of course, refers to the heart, so you will only find cardiac muscle in the heart. Uh, it's interesting because it can, it is the only tissue that we have that can be stimulated uh, on its own without the nervous system telling it to contract. Um, the cells are striated as well. Uh, they do branch, so you look for branching. They have a single nucleus, and they have something that's a little bit different, a special intracellular junction called an intercalated disc. So that is something that you really want to look for. That is a feature that definitely you're going to probably see on a lab exam. Um, but this is really how you can tell if you're dealing with cardiac muscle. So let's look at this intercalated disc here. Do you see these little dark lines like right there? There's two right here. These things, these are the nucleus, but these long ones are intercalated disc. Only cardiac muscle has these, okay? And remember, cardiac is involuntary. Uh, the intercalated discs are what allow the cardiac muscle to act as one. It's basically like a symphony. The nervous system is going to send a signal, and then all of that muscle needs to contract at the same time in order to pump. It can't be a series or chain of events. It needs to do so uh, all at the same time, all right? So uh, this pumps blood through the heart chambers and into blood vessels. Uh, and of course, that's going to carry things around the body. Be sure that you can identify the nucleus and the intercalated disc, but that's the defining feature that you're gonna know this is cardiac muscle. And we'll learn about that in the uh, system when we learn about the heart in uh, anatomy too. It's really pretty interesting that the heart can pump without any interference from the nervous system. Now they do kind of have some communication between the two, uh, but it is able to contract its muscle fibers without any stimulation from the nervous system. And that's a really pretty cool thing to do. So lastly, we have nervous tissue. Uh, there are some slides that are cross sections of nervous tissue. and They're kind of hard to identify. So I do tend to avoid these. You may see these in some of your assignments. Um, do look at them, but if I give you a nerve cell on an exam, it's going to be this type here, okay? So neurons send messages to other neurons. Neurons are the functional unit of the nervous system. Um, so they're going to send messages to either other neurons, glands, and muscles. They send messages all over the body, and they're basically the nervous system is one of the things that is the control center for the whole human body. Um, we have gap junctions in the nervous system. Uh, we have what we call neuroglial cells, and these support glial. When I see, see the word glial, I always think glue because it binds things. And so these cells support and bind nervous tissue components together. Uh, these function in sen sensory reception. So we can have receptors here, and then it's going to send that signal up and go to the brain for integration. And then once that signal is integrated and understood, uh, it will be sent back down through the nervous system uh, to cause some type of motor function or response because of that. So these conduct nerve impulses, okay? And so here there's some features that you definitely want to pay attention to. You can see that you have uh, a lot of nucleus in the neuroglia, okay? This branching section here, uh, this is the dendrite, and the long, thin sections are what we call axons. Uh, you can see there is some cytoplasm in here. Uh, and then there's some cell membrane. You wouldn't have to identify the cell membrane, but you need to know that this is an axon. This part here, this is what we call the cell body. And then we have these dendrites. And we'll learn more about nerves and the nervous system uh, when we get to that section. So this is the end of chapter five. Hopefully you are working hard and really, really studying these tissues. It is one of the more difficult tests, but if you work at understanding what those words mean and you work at comparing these different types of tissues and see what kind of defines them, what is their defining feature, then you're gonna understand them and know what to look for. Because remember, when you're looking at that slide or that picture of a slide, um, you're going to have several different types of tissues there. So we kind of have to shift, sift through all of that and make sure we know what we're looking at. So this is the end of chapter five.